Hello again, and welcome to the second Smokeless Tobacco Education and Prevention presentation. I'm Melinda Torres, and in this presentation, I will be discussing the ingredients in smokeless tobacco, some background information on how smokeless tobacco is marketed, and various prevention methods to help quitting smokeless tobacco use altogether. Many people believe that it is the smoke from burning tobacco that leads to so many of the harmful chemicals listed in cigarettes, but you may be surprised to hear that smokeless tobacco contains many of the same harmful chemicals. In addition to nicotine, smokeless tobacco contains most of the chemicals we discuss for cigarettes, including cadmium, formaldehyde, lead, and polonium-210. Smokeless tobacco has also been found to contain uranium-235, which is the highly toxic cancer-causing reagent used in nuclear weaponry. Smokeless tobacco also contains fiberglass and sand, which are harmful abrasives. The sodium found in smokeless tobacco products can lead to high blood pressure, and due to the nature of smokeless tobacco products resting in the mouth for extended periods of time, the sugar found in many of the products increases the risk of cavities. So then, with all of those harmful chemicals found in smokeless tobacco products and all of the negative health effects, why does anyone purchase smokeless tobacco products? The same marketing strategies that are employed for traditional cigarettes are used to market smokeless tobacco products. Just to refresh your memory, these include avant-garde, which is a tactic in which products are suggested to put the user ahead of the times. Patriotism is quite common and involves suggesting that users should purchase a product to demonstrate pride in their country. The plain folks marketing tactic is particularly popular for marketing smokeless tobacco products, but some appeals less commonly implemented. The bandwagon approach is still common for smokeless tobacco products as well. Thankfully, the Family Smoking Prevention and Tobacco Control Act placed a great number of restrictions on the advertising of smokeless tobacco products. For a long time, smokeless tobacco products were sold as safer alternatives to smoking cigarettes. However, smokeless tobacco products are now required to prove to the FDA that such products are in fact safer before they can market them as such. Thus, so far, no smokeless tobacco product has received permission to do so. Included in this module, you will find a brief video which discusses marketing and advertising for smokeless tobacco. This video will give you valuable insight on how smokeless tobacco is marketed. Despite the efforts of the federal government to dispel myths surrounding smokeless tobacco, many individuals are still misinformed about the facts regarding smokeless tobacco. Much of the information already provided should help you address the most common myths, but let's directly address a few particular myths. It's sometimes believed that good gum care will counteract the negative effects associated with using smokeless tobacco products. However, the reality is that smokeless tobacco causes damage to the whole mouth, teeth, lips, gums, tongue, and the inside of the cheeks, as well as the throat, regardless of how many times you brush, floss, and use mouthwash. As previously mentioned, smokeless tobacco used to be marketed as a harmless alternative to smoking. This is quite simply not true. These warnings are printed on the containers of smokeless tobacco products for a reason. Many also state that smokeless tobacco isn't as addicting as cigarette smoking, but smokeless tobacco still contains the addictive chemical nicotine. Additionally, smokeless tobacco is sometimes used among athletic circles, particularly baseball players, because of a false perception that using dip or chew will improve athletic performance. However, as the National Institute of Health points out, studies have shown there is no connection between smokeless tobacco use and player performance. In fact, the use of smokeless tobacco increases heart rate and blood pressure within minutes after use and places extra stress on the heart. When it comes to quitting smokeless tobacco, there aren't as many options available as there are for quitting smoking. The FDA-approved medications for smoking cessation, such as Zyban and Chantix, are not approved for quitting smokeless tobacco use. Instead, the National Institute of Health provides a long list of suggested methods and tips for help with quitting the use of smokeless tobacco. The first step, of course, is deciding to quit. This must be an active decision and one in which you intend on sticking to. List out the reasons why you should quit and then pick a quit date. Pick a date, write it down, and stick to it. Although some people are able to quit cold turkey, for others, cutting back makes quitting easier. If so, plan to cut back before the quit date selected. Once the quit date arrives, some helpful habits to help ensure success include substitution therapy. Instead of carrying around smokeless tobacco, stick to sugar-free chewing gum, hard candies, sunflower seeds, or some other product which can replace the physical action of using the smokeless tobacco product. Even things as simple as changing where you sit when you eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner can help. The goal is to change your daily routine to avoid places where you typically consumed the products to begin with. Becoming informed on these tips can help you to help members of our university and community quit using smokeless tobacco products and make our community a healthier, safer place. If you haven't already done so, watch the videos on smokeless tobacco advertising and smokeless tobacco ingredients. After that, you will have your next quit check quiz. As always, if you don't get all the questions right the first time around, review the material and try again until you complete it. 
Once you've completed this quick check quiz, you'll have your second test. If you score 90% or better the first time you take the test, you will unlock the next module. Otherwise, you'll need to take the test a second time. Regardless of your score in the second attempt, the next module will unlock.